Last week we brought our guild to the sanctuary and we left forgiven. This is great, but it looks like we cleaned our house by throwing the garbage outside. <laughs> the main issue is still present. How is the damage caused by our separation from God going to be repaired? Our sin can just disappear. And here we are now, at the Day of Atonement. Two phase of atonement. This is the second stage, the Sabbath of the Sabbaths. There is no forgiving, but cleansing. Before the Lord you will be clean, Moses said. There are the rituals for the atonement of the sanctuary and the priests who are the bearers of the sin of the people. This is where we left guilt last week. What happens now? I think that the essence is in the two goats. Every animal sacrificed during the year was for sin, but not on this day. One of the goats was not a carrier of sin. There were no hands laid upon it. There was no sin confessed. This was the Lord's goat. Right. All the moral dirt accumulated could be purified only by clean blood. Have you ever felt that even though you have confessed your moral mistakes to the Lord, your feeling deep down is that you haven't been forgiven? Wrong, wrong perception. What the ceremony practice on the Day of Atonement teaches is that there is no action of forgiveness performed by the High Priest and everything was about cleansing of the sanctuary. God had already forgiven their sins. Now he was putting an end to it. This was the purification part. Mm -hmm. But sin is still present. It has to be eliminated. So we are getting to the last piece, the scapegoat. Sin gets transferred to it. Hmm. Okay, Nick, this is a little bit confusing. The live goat for Azazo has been released into the wilderness after the high priest lays the hands upon it and confesses all the sin. Mm -hmm. And he is also the final step on the daily ritual on the day of Yom Kippur. Why is he not part of the cleansing on that same day? Very important question. The scapegoat is how sins get eliminated. It's sent back to the one responsible for it, and it's destroyed by itself. The purification is not just the removal of sin by transferring it out. It can be done only by another clean and pure life. One day was capable of cancelling all the sacrifices throughout the year if someone did not keep it holy or did not deny him or herself on that day. There was faith exercised by the sinner during the whole year when they transferred the sin from themselves to the sanctuary. Now it was faith again that helped them see that the sins have been transferred from the holy to the most holy place where God dealt with them. The Israelites didn't do anything as part of the sacrificial ceremony, but it was all about the observance of the day. There is a lot of symbolism in this entire system. Very deep meaning. In the next lessons, we'll be looking much more into how all this materializes and how it's affecting us. But this Day of Atonement is something very big. In the lessons, it says that the Day of Atonement was truly about nothing less than life and death. It must have been something to get out of such day, embracing life after dealing with death. Even though it was such a public holiday, Yom Kippur was a very personal day. The excitement of the Israelites of being fully clean and feeling no baggage on his moral shoulders gave them wings to live with God and to desire his presence. The presence of God terrified the prophet Isaiah. He felt life disappearing out of him. But once cleansed by God, he was transformed to the one capable to say, here I am. Send me. Have a blessed week.